Alrighty then, it's time for a Jungle Nautilus game. Let's get the show on the road. So, Jungle Nautilus, is it good? Is it bad? Welp. Now, a short answer, it's bad. But, can you make it work? Most likely not. But, you know, if you get lucky, will things work out for you? Most likely not too. In this case though, a lot of things aligned for me that made it kind of a good choice and also, you know, just survivable. For starters, look at my team comp. Trindamir, Vladimir, Ezreal, and Nami. I was last pick. Nami was, I think, last pick with me, so we had no crowd control. And I needed someone with crowd control. And, you know, the other option was Pauly Sejuani. The guy picked his axe, so I was kind of sad about that. So I decided, you know what? I don't want to play Sejuani, so I went with Nautilus, and obviously I had to use three potions through that clear. It was super slow, and Zach invaded me alongside Poppy, and I almost died. But so far, so good. Yeah, Nautilus, season two, God. And now, since since then, he's been pretty much trash. And honestly, he would have been one of my favorite champions on that list I made, if it wasn't for the fact that he's so weak now in the jungle. I mean, lane is one thing, but... Eh. It's basically, he's just way too slow. He's way too slow and vulnerable to just be getting his ass kicked and it's just like wards everywhere make his ganks really ineffective because yeah he had a lot of crowd control but his ganks were kind of you know only really successful because he got to take you by surprise and you didn't have like a million seconds to react to it. It's like if he found you you'd have like one two seconds to make a decision and if you guessed your decision right he'd kill you. But now because everyone's got wards and everything's pretty much you know protected you know they'll see you coming five six seconds and you'll be able to just kind of counter it completely. Either way you can see that early on I'm not, I don't get to very do very much but because of a really odd level uh, uh, a really odd level six here with the red steel I'm able to gank you know you're from behind. Thanks to pathing, it's a very awkward one, but easily pe easy peasy misfortune just kind of gets destroyed. So, good easy kill here. Bottom lane gets to reset their lane, sort of. It was kind of being weird where they they get a kill, they get pushed back or whatever. But now I at least solidify them. I go to try to gank Syndra. I make a really weird walk towards her. That was just me misclicking and being really bad because I showed myself with no chance of actually killing her. But she kind of forgets that I'm here and just kind of dawdles about. You know, she gets super aggro against the Vladimir, and that just allows me to get close enough to just destroy her. Although I have to use Flash to get my passive off on her, and we just destroy her. And I decided, I almost forgot to take these shots for the Vladimir, and he had to use a stopwatch to survive. So that's my fault there. Anyhow, bro, you can already tell, the only runes that are, are like any different than the tanky ones I'm taking is I have Grasp of the Undying, which was kind of a mistake. I remember that Aftershock existed after I had already, you know, gone into Champion Select, but whatever. I mean, after Champion Select, but whatever. Anyways, easy gank on the Misfortune, and this is what I mean by sort of a surprise. Like, you know, the, the plant basically made up for the whole war thing, but this made it so she had to make a quick decision, and it would die at some point anyways. Either if I got her with my Q or Ultimate, she was gonna, she was pretty doomed. One thing about Nautilus a lot of people do underestimate as well, by the way, is that he actually has pretty damn high damage. Only real problem is that a lot of his damage is tied around, you know, being melee range or having a shield. So it's pretty, it's very conditional. Anyways, I, as far as item build is going, I've said this before and I've said it in the, especially said it like a million times in, during the stream, but Glacier Shroud is like his greatest item. It's like you just buy one or two of those things at some point, you know, obviously not two because it has that unique thingy. You just buy Glacier Shroud items and you're a happy man. Or a happy submarine. Easy to get on the, uh, on the Syndra. She just kind of... Re she might have realized, oh crap, I'm dead because Nautilus is already in a superior position. And yeah, she was kind of doomed. Although she should have kind of protected the cube, but I don't know if she saw that coming because she had lacked any wards. But yeah, two kills. Well, four kills technically, three of them being assist for Nautilus. So, so far so good. I'm building Righteous Glory first, even though they're recommended as Frozen Heart, because Righteous Glory is going to help my Gimp ass actually get places and will give me cooldown reduction and whatnot. Yeah, alongside the mobility, right? It's not the biggest deal. Uh, Frozen Heart gives you more cooldown reduction. Anyways, Poppy, in the same way, gets a little too overzealous to get the Trindomir, and she kind of should have known that I was going to be here, although I think she thought she'd kill the Trindomir. But, you see, I was able to do a crap load of damage just because I was able to kind of sit on top of her and deal all that damage out, or dish it out, I mean. And that's the only time Nautilus can actually do anything. She wasn't really trying to fight back, 
she was more looking to try to snipe the Trindamir before she either died or something. So that proved to be her undoing. She could have probably tried doing something or survive or hit me a little bit harder, but she probably would have still died anyway. So I guess, you know, doing the best of the bad situation it is. Yeah, so far this is pretty stompish, though, to be fair, I... Said so the Ezreal did have control of bottom lane a little back and forth with Misfortune, but me showing up there and killing Misfortune and allowing him to gain that advantage was pretty significant. I mean, not grossly significant, but significant. And mid lane just kind of bearing Syndra was the big deal right there. Syndra and so Vladimir wasn't doing bad, but you know, again, interfering, getting her killed, perfect. And then herein lies the big issue of why we we're able to get away with this. So, like I mentioned, my team composition has a lot of issues in which we don't have crowd control and you know we're a little bit on the smushy side aside from me right so those are two glaring issues that Nautilus can actually fulfill by himself you know if he survives the early game or whatnot but thankfully they have a Zac who isn't really an invader jungle although he did try to invade because Nautilus is super weak to anybody really early on and then afterwards kind of didn't do anything and i was actually able to steal some of his stuff so i was basically able to free farm for a while and get big and strong and juicy and then you look at the pound for pound the laners my laners aren't weak theirs aren't that weak either right but mine aren't weak so at the very very best the lanes were going to be lopsided one way or the other by the way here i completely messed up the queue but, you know, flash play and snare, whatever. Just just assume I was kind of cool with that. And I, you know, give it a little nod of this booty shake where you spam two of your, uh, where you spam your dance and your taunt and it makes a little booty shake. But anyways. So yeah, their team count bulls are weak, but none of us were going to win lanes. T probably, at the very least, Trindamir and Vladimir were going to cause some sort of pressure that would make it so Poppy and or Syndra couldn't really roam around, so they'd be locked into their lanes. The big one would be bottom lane. Since Misfortune is a kill lane and Ezra is a pokey lane, essentially whoever messes up is going to get themselves killed. And that's actually kind of what did happen. So it was going to rely heavily on the junglers doing stuff. And as far as I know, the Zac was kind of, you know, he wasn't really doing very much in comparison to me. So that kind of shifted all the favor towards my team. This was kind of a game about either some laner just wins by being the better player or the jungler sets things apart. So, you know, the combination of having some better teammates just straight out and the slightly better composition did edge it out. It would have been far more interesting if everything was super even because it would come down to the team fights. Because both team comps are pretty strong in team fights. However, there is the other issue the enemy team kind of has. Uh, if you look at their comp, it sort of feels like Two champions are focused on one thing, and the other two are focused on another thing, and one champion is not focused on anything else, so it's sort of like a 2-2-1 two, two, and one kind of comp. It's going to be weird, but I'll probably use that phrase a little bit more because I heard someone else use it, and I like the way they used it, so it, it was pretty nice. Essentially, the idea is they have a five-person comp, meaning all of them sort of synergize together, or a three-and-two comp, which, you know, means three people are working well together and two work with themselves, whatever. In their case, I would say 2-2-1 two, two, and one comp. The Poppy is kind of the singular champion here in which she, her, her, in the grand scheme of the champion pool, doesn't make too much sense. Zac works pretty well with champions like Syndra and a bit with Misfortune. And uh, a little bit with Brand, but more with Syndra. And then Misfortune and Brand kind of work together with just a whole boom, tastic, destroy the enemy team style. But Poppy is kind of unable to be really effective in this. I wouldn't say she was bad, I would just say she just kind of got outpicked, or, you know, her team didn't pick. I think she was also second pick, so the, yeah, her teammates just sort of didn't answer to her call. But yeah, at that point, at this point of the game, I literally just had one man walk into the enemy team and win the game. And like my my Nautilus is that kind of champion who could just thrust his fat body somewhere, put, pick the right target with his ultimate, and scatter the enemy team about, and then grab people, or just start disrupting and whatnot. Doesn't matter how much damage I do at this point. All I have to do is just scatter, control, and mess with the enemy, and we'd win. So yeah past the midpoint where you know our little advantages started snowballing out of control yeah they were kind of donezo nautilus didn't have the greatest effect because you know he's really weak but in this very situation the stars aligned to make him a viable pick
And remember, if you enjoyed the video, make a comment below in the comment section and also give the video a like. That helps the channel a lot more than you think.